Okay. Okay, let's get started. As, as I informed you before, this is uh, open courseware based English course. So lecture hour, the first one hour or another hour, total two hours gonna be lecture and rest of two or three hours gonna be lab exercises. So recording gonna be uh, within lecture hour, that means first and including second hours gonna be recorded. So let's get started with this lecture. Today's title, Why Design Computing? As an extended lecture from last week, we need to deal with certain kind of the first stage of this course named Intro Introduction to Design Computing. So after that, after the lecture, we're gonna deal with some lab exercise specific issues, how to use your computers, this environment, network, local area network for accessing your lecture file, including this kind of files, slides, and some lab exercise material. And you, are, you have obligation to submit all your files within the class, within the classroom, okay? So, Actually, right now, you, you need to take a look at this screen for the class material. material. You didn't know how to access the server located here. But for your information, I would like to tell you detail, but let me tell you just one thing. Just one thing. How to get this file from the computer. Okay, why design computing? That's the question for today. I told you last week, what is design computing is also very important, but right now, for beginners like you guys, as a freshman, we need to share the ideas. Why we need to know computing technologies for design? That's basic and fundamental question. Before getting into the course material, let's review the survey you have done last week. Simply one by one. Basically my intent, my intent for getting this survey is simply, I would like to know your interest, your skill, and the way to go in terms of design computing, computing techniques in this classroom. So around 10, yes, I found from your survey, that's kind of average. But hopefully at the end of this semester, just after taking this course, you may be very knowledgeable at least the items I listed up here. 20 questions, 20 yes, that's my intention. First one, I have used computers more than six years, of course. We are living with computers, including your smartphones, your tablets, or small devices, or have CPUs and some computing hardware surrounding you. So definitely you are living with computers lots of years. I know SNS, especially Facebook, or Facebook-like websites, SciWorld, Twitter, and so on. You are using such kind of SNS site. Without any specific manual or guideline, you know how to use that kind of website. Nothing special or nothing that different using SketchUp, using 3D Max, using renderers, including mental ray or V-ray is something similar to use your Facebook. You know how to access your account, how to post your picture, how to write down what you are feeling on your wall. That uh, definitely something different technically, but eventually same to use some specific software as well as this kind of general software using website. 
even more important thing is you have to use your social network service like Facebook with some appropriate attitude and some kind of manner. We would like to discuss about it later. But anyway, number three, you are using computers every day, almost every day, more than two hours, definitely. Designers use computers every day in every their single job for designing, of course. That's why we are dealing with this kind of digital tools. Smartphones, tablets, of course, they are computers too. Not just computers in front of you, what laptop computers like this. Smartphones, tablets, they have different operating system, different software, apps. But anyway, they are computers nowadays. No doubts. I know HTML. HTML is kind of very elementary, fundamental level computer language to represent web pages. Your Facebook, is, your Facebook page is composed of HTML, bunch of HTML with some more computer languages. You don't need to know exactly what it is, but at least you should know HTML, JavaScript, they are certain kind of programming language, Java, C-sharp, .NET, that kind of technologies are certain kind of computing things. At least you have to differentiate them from some others. Database, it's kind of very complicated, but in the same way, you have to know what it is, at least. Without database, you cannot access your Facebook, your website, Naver, Google, and so on. They are all based on certain kind of database. Actually, this is certain kind of fundamental and some survey purpose questions, but hopefully you can uh, pay some of your attention to this kind of general computing issues because we're gonna deal with very general computing issues and very specialized computing issues regarding interior architecture design for your major. Not just for computing software such as AutoCAD, SketchUp, 3D Max, and so on. They are major software you should use in the future, but right now, as a beginner, we have to deal with some fundamental and general computing issues, including some of these. Computer graphics is one of the mathematics rather than uh, some, some art or some others in terms of computer's standpoint. Vector graphics, raster graphics, another topic we need to deal with in some theory part. You should know what is vector graphics and what is bitmap graphics in terms of theoretical background for knowing digital design. Technical aspect, you should know how to adjust your computer screen resolution. Simply click right button on desktop and change resolution, that's it. Very simple, but you have to know what it is and how to do that. That's my question and we have to deal with some general computing issues. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, they are uh, good, very uh, great friends and also rivals more than a couple of decades. MS-DOS is kind of legacy computing operating system. You don't need to know exactly what it is, but we're gonna deal with that in terms of some history of computing. You don't need to know computer programming languages such as C, C++, C Sharp, Java, PHP, and so on. But I told you, at least you should know what are they. That's important. Autodesk, AutoCAD, 3D Max, they are specialized software for architectural design. You will deal with such kind of software in near future. 
including this classroom, this course. Building information modeling, BIM, is kind of cutting edge and advanced computing environment and paradigm in our domain, design computing domain. Later on, you're going to learn what it is and how to use that, how to apply that to your practice, and so on. Some general and speci specialized computing issues going to be dealt with in the course later, next week, next step to next week. Anyway, at last, the main goal for this course is being an expert in using computers. Actually, that is not the, the main goal. The main goal is designing better and doing something better and more efficient for your work. Your work is going to be mostly design, design interior architecture, right? to support your work. That is main approach and main goal of using computers. Not using computers itself, per se. Anyway, you should, you should be an expert. That's the main goal to achieve in this course. Before handling some, some actual thing I prepared, by the way, you have to open that PowerPoint slide and take a look at this screen or your screen and keep focusing on what we are dealing with. You, sh you should know where we are in terms of this slide. After that, we're going to move on to lab exercises and some detailed issues. Anyway, before handling the major content, some actual uh, elementary preview of actual design process and some design instance example, I would like to bring your attention, enhancing your creativity, so-called digital creativity. How to enhance your creativity using digital tools? That's one question. Before using some specialized computing tools, enhancing your creativity by using computers. Let's take a look at those two different criteria. Those two classification shows you certain kind of myth, anyway. But anyway, totally different two things listed up here. Usually, people say left brain functions are their logic, facts, words, math, mathematics, and science, and so on for left brain. And right brain functions simply displayed here. Imagination, symbols, philosophy, some fantasy based, and so on. Which one do you like, or which one do you have? Actually, those two very different terms listed up here are looking very different. But actually, my point here is we need to use both sides of your brain in terms of this classification. Even if this is true or not, it's not that important. The important thing is you should know logic as well as some sensible sens sens sensibility, some emotional facts. You should be very good at spoken language as well as drawing pictures, images. Of course, you should be very scientific because design is kind of science, not an art. But of course, you should know concepts. And you should explain certain conceptual things as well as some scientific facts. Okay. Naturally, designers should be practical because if your design couldn't be realized in real world, that is not real design, that is just imagination. You are drawing, you are practice. Whatever, however, your design should be 
probably could be erected in the real world on specific site. That is why you should be practical, but also you should be imaginary. Sometimes you can design very, very, some, some fantasy-based, imaginary, totally different style of design. That is kind of obligation of designers. If you design the same as you designed before, nothing innovative design can be introduced to public, to people. So you have obligation to design by your own creativity. That's my point here. And design computing is a kind of very powerful tool for doing this, okay? Your design. We are not doing computing. We are not, we, our focus is not on computing itself. Our focus is still on design. That's why I put design darker fonts, okay? Even if we are in the classroom entitled design computing as a freshman course, our focus is still on design, okay? Not computing. But design computing is kind of different. In reality, you should know computing a lot before or with knowing design, okay? So design computing, so-called digital creativity can enhance your imaginary some creative ideas to express your thoughts in your brain on top of your computer screen or something print out, okay? So digitally augmented creativity is necessary for you guys. Try to think totally different, okay, using computers. You can express your, by yourself using computers. But actually, without computers, you can do something by hand. Hand drawing or expressing by words. But designers have their own language. For example, floor plans, 3D axonometric, 3D renderings, that kind of design preview images, they are kind of subject to be created by you using computers. That's why I'm saying this kind of keywords should be going along with you, okay? Based on the course. Let's get walk through a certain kind of actual project. This is not just something about only computing. This is something about this building. You may know this building has just remodeled a year ago, Hanyang University College of Human Ecology building. Let's get walk through what happened on this building exactly a year ago. These are pictures this building kind of used to be. This is as is at the time, as is AutoCAD drawing of this floor, fifth floor. We need to remodel this building and we generated certain kind of floor plans using computer tool named AutoCAD. So AutoCAD drawing files produced for new floor plan for this, this, this floor. Now I'm standing around here and this is <coughs> Computer lab, elevators, toilets, stairwell, and our college library, and my office is here, corridor, area. So we are all in this room now. This is our new floor plan. We don't need to use very sophisticated computing tools for all the project, but at that time, I made this kind of floor plans something done by Photoshop, something done by PowerPoint, and so on. No need to use very complicated 3D software. So let's get uh, reviewed some College of Human Ecology building floor plan examples. 
these are not AutoCAD drawings or 3G Max renderings. I mean, they are not that complicated files, but I used some 2D images based on PowerPoint and Photoshop and some other tools. So this is kind of given flow plan, CAD file, and I import them into Photoshop and simply 2D image edit done by me and some planned this kind of computer lab library and some, some design studio for our depart department like this. And some color legend attached. And finally, it displayed using PowerPoint to show how this building looks like in the future at the time. So around two years ago, we planned this one using given AutoCAD file using Photoshop, not complicated 3D software. So this is spatial allocation plan for design studio in this floor for third year grade students. And second one, computer lab. Another one for, for the room just in front of this room. Device lab, I'm not sure the name of it. And another design studio for graduate students located in the same floor, fifth floor, like this. And we planned some furniture layout like this. We don't need to use complicated 3D view or 3D rendering, 3D modeling for representing how this building looks like in the future for based on this remodeling process. This is sixth floor. You, you know this floor too. There is gradu graduation exhibition lab and another studio and studio for freshmen, your studio maybe, on sixth floor. And there is a design hall in sixth floor. There is a large scale screen installed, so soon to be uh, released some video and images using that large screen attached on that uh, exhibition hall on the sixth floor. Anyway, all these are planned before remodel actual construction. And also sixth floors, spatial allocation, furniture, furniture layout planned using this PowerPoint as well as some Photoshop edits not that complicated. My point here is we don't need to use AutoCAD, 3D Max, Rhino, Grasshopper, Rabbit. We don't need to use very complicated software all the time. You should know computing technologies exactly appropriate what you gonna do, what you want to do, okay? In terms of that standpoint, we, we have to see what is the goal? What is you have to do? In terms of that thing, you can choose your computing tools by kind of specific uh, purpose-oriented uh, aspects, considering that, that facts, okay? So le let me show you some pictures in this remodeling project. When we get, uh, took up some old material, cotton oil surface of this building and some, some old uh, structure of windows and something else. So the first floor lobby has been reconstructed like this. Some brick walls removed and cotton oil also removed and some material finish on bottom floor and walls all totally removed like this. Partition walls also get removed and reinstalled. And as you see here, this is fifth, fifth floor and 
certain kind of old car of that elevator and some old surface finish. But as you see here, there are amount of brackets attached on this wall and this kind of stone panels installed like this. This is detailed picture of that bracket. So bracket installed and this kind of wall panel, stone panel attached. That's what you experienced in this building, okay? So if you remove this panel, there are gonna be some old structure, the concrete wall structure gonna be released revealed. This is first floor lobby, old style of lobby, but this lobby also changed, updated its uh, wall finish using that high glossy uh, stone wall. And your design studio, lecture room also cleaned up by new finishes on wall, ceiling, and bottom floor. Bottom floor also installed the uh, access floor for network and some internet lines and so on. Some more pictures and some more instances. Let's see. Some examples of planning. In terms of design a new building or update the building by remodel process, preview, anticipating how it looks like in the future is very important. So previewing of design is important. In terms of that, we prepared this kind of files. All these lines drawn by PowerPoint, not AutoCAD. We don't need to use complicated software. We can draw or even you can draw by your hand using computers, using your tablets, your Galaxy Note. You can draw anything and convert them into certain kind of compute, computing files. At that time, I used PowerPoint to draw those lines on top of old floor plan, CAD file. And newly developed words simply represented by single lines like this doors represented and elevate, uh, sorry, stairwell also represented in architectural symbol. This is basement floor of this building. Some changed this area, but anyway, at the time, I downloaded that bitmap images from Google and tried to test it, how many students can be entered in that auditorium for all students in our college, that's B106. You know this room, right? Under construction, B106 looked like this. Some skipped floor because of that uh, different level. It has been installed like that. And interior finish enclosed with some, some glossy floor material as well as some, some, some uh, soundproof wooden material for the wall and ceiling also installed and some, some lighting devices installed. And this is kind of final view of that auditorium, right? After installing those uh, auditorium chairs. So this is B106. Another example is first floor lobby. This is 2D plan. What you have to do using computing tools are simply previewed by those slides. Take a look at that one, 2D plan drawings. One of the important drawings you have to generate while you are designing. Okay, 2D plan drawings are here. This is one of them, the first floor, and this is main entry and the lobby area. In this original plan, there were a lot of 
table and chairs. But we realize that there are amount of people circulation here because this building has dining hall for lunch, for dinner, amount of people accessing this first floor lobby. So kind of shrinking size of student chair, uh, sorry, desk and table area around here. So now, now you see that area has such kind of uh, student lounge area placed in that area, avoiding some conflict with people circulation. Anyway, at that time, on top of this given AutoCAD flow plan, this is bitmap image, not vector file. I just created this kind of dimensions using PowerPoint lines and some put some highlights and loaded some pictures of tables, chairs, and so on. So at the time, 3D rendering, one of the 3D rendering images, actually this one, not just for that lobby, this one for different project actually, but I got this file and tried to make something similar to this kind of simplified rectangle shape furniture. That is why you, you find out this one in, in our building lobby. So this kind of 3D renderings are one of the major subjects you should deal with in the near future in your design school for designing interior architecture, okay? 3D renderings, also you need to generate by yourself using computers. Actually, this is picture we intended to create something similar atmosphere as shown in this picture. So we just created a first floor lobby, even if it's very small space and not that many furniture loaded in that area in student lounge. That is anyway one example and how to anticipate that student lounge area so that we can remodel and place our furniture for that. Another example, let's take a look at this main entry. This is our building and first level's main entry. When we finished this remodel building, there was no college sign here. So I, in my class, with 13 Hakbon students, I requested this one as one, one of your examples. So students generate that file using 3D software. It's not that hard to do. But anyway, this kind of signage, uh, signage and college kind of uh, sign just on top of that canopy of main entry, we model this one using SketchUp and some other tools in this classroom in this intro to this digital design class with a freshman. I mean, it's not that hard to do, very easy. So this one ordered and installed like this. So now you may find out this one every day, just in front of our main entry, right? Around 1,500 US dollar cost. So let's get move to conventional design representation, but let me quickly show you something about this. Let me open the file using uh, SketchUp, okay? Let's take a look at this file. This one looks like a certain 2D, but actually this is 3D model of this canopy and this university sign. This is certain kind of geometric shape. This is geometrically calculated 3D model. Computer now knows where is the point and how to connect them 
Cartesian coordinate points within this universe. So computer can represent points, their connection, and their connection to the surface, filled with gray color, and so on. So now computer can represent this kind of 3D objects. In the lab exercise hours, we're going to deal with how to make this, how to handle. But before doing that, we should know why. So this lecture simply walk through about it. This is kind of preview. Let me render this one using V-Ray renderer. If I click render button, rendering bu bucket going to be generating this image like this. This is not that realistic because I didn't put any material, any lighting, anything else, just all default. But anyway, this one just generated 2D bitmap image. This is kind of fixed, finalized 2D raster image. I cannot panning or control it. This is raster image of this scene. But using this one, we can rotate or recreate of the view because this is, this is geometry definition. In other words, computational model of this one. And this one is kind of just rendering image of this one. This is raster image, and this is vector image, 3D. This is 2D. You don't need to know detail. We're going to deal with this one later in the classroom, in lecture, as well as some lab exercises. This is kind of quick preview, OK? Let's have a quick break. I just realize some of you got falling asleep, wake up, and get back to the classroom, OK? And then finish the rest of lecture and move on to the lab exercise, OK? OK, let's get back to the course material. Let's get talked about <clears throat> conventional design representation. Those slides will show you certain kind of conventional manner of design and design representation. In other words, kind of conventional design computing. We are not dealing with a certain kind of cutting edge technologies. We are dealing with very elementary but fundamental aspects of design computing. For example, floor plans. Elevations, sections, axonometric, 3D perspective views for building environments. They are what you have to create in near future in design studio or even this class for the final project and so on. So as a beginner, as an elementary level students in our department, interior architecture design, you should know what are there in conventional design representation methods plus conventional design computing. Very uh, easy and kind of beginner stage issues. Conventional CAD in architectural design. Even you are not an expert in architectural design, you know what is floor plan, what is plans, in, especially in 2D drawings. I mean, something like this. You know what this stands for. These are walls and a door installed and some window openings. We find out very similar plans in our daily life. In subway station, in a new building, main entry, main lobby, or some flyers for advertising a new apartment, new building, and so on. So you know fundamentals of architectural symbols. In other classes, such as some architectural symbols or some hand drafting course you are taking now as a freshman, you will learn what are they. But anyway, using computers, we generate those plans, especially printed out this kind of 
blueprints or some, some large scale uh, printouts. Sometimes too many printouts, too many drawings, that's the problem in conventional environment. What are there? What kind of drawings? Site plan, plan, elevation, section, and a lot of different type of 3D images, 3D renderings. So let's get, take a look at site plan first. Site plan represents your building as well as building site, literally, as it means. Landscaping, contour, compass. Compass is here. The symbol to represent which one is north direction and south direction. Okay, So they are represented in this kind of site plan. Another example of site plan, sometimes some color fields helps to see where is the landscape, where, where are trees, something like that. Okay, As well as your building as a top view. All these are ceiling. Another site plan shows you building mass, building shape on top view, and certain kind of exterior auditorium place, and a lot of trees and some walk trail around that building. How about plan? Usually, we call floor plan. In our convention, you may know these thick black lines are walls, and void spaces are so-called some, some living area. Sometimes some landscaping things can be represented. But anyway, one different thing from site plan is site plan has its roof, ceiling. But of course, floor plan is kind of cut, so you can see cut view of that building so that you can see floor, each floor. That is why we have first floor plan, second level floor plan, third level floor plan, something like that. So exact components of plan, line, depth, dimension can be represented. Also scale, pattern, furniture layout. Another important thing is some detailed furniture or some elements can be layout in this floor plan. That is so-called plan, floor plan. There are very different style of floor plans. But in near future, you have to draw something similar to this kind of plans. Tables, chairs, stairwell, some line representation. Because this is kind of cut, you cut this building in first floor. So some objects can be cut by your cut line. That is why you should represent this one in this kind of dot lines. Anyway, you have to know that kind of convention symbols, how to represent your building, your design. But anyway, mostly done by computers. Even if you are doing by hand at freshman level, this class going to take this kind of representation using computers, fundamental software. Another example of this building, this floor, the former floor plan done by AutoCAD. Next one is elevation. Elevation presents contour and its height. Now we can see the height. This Gray color field usually represents land. So it's angled, sometimes all flat. We don't need to take care of some different height. But usually, we got this kind of situation, usually, on our building site. Some of them have some different level, some basement floor, basement objects, elements, and so on. So you need to take a look at standardized elevation, floor plan, or even 3D representations in our design domain. Also, elevation can represent this kind of trees, landscaping. Even people, you can draw. 
thanks to those trees or some landscaping or some, some people, what you can figure out is its scale. Usually we know the tree has some kind of 5 meter, 10 meter, that kind of height. We know that. It couldn't be just uh, not taller than 1 meter or taller than 100 meter, something like that. It's kind of scale. So you can imagine how this building has its height, how it's tall, like compared to this tree or even by human, OK? So elevation can represent that kind of additional uh, environmental and some landscaping things. And let's move to something done by 3D. This is 3D wireframe, but take a look at when this building 3D model generated. It's 1976, generated by BDS system, Glide language, invented by Professor Chuck Eastman at the time in Carnegie Mellon University, United States. He's my advisor. This is 1976, very earlier version of 3D representation of building. But anyway, my point here is even 70s people invented this kind of 3D representation of building. But at the time, all in wireframe, that means it's not realistic. We can imagine, OK, this is kind of stairwell, doors, some windows, walls, but they are all kind of x-ray view. Usually, it's supposed to be closed because of some, some blocked layout. So similar wireframe view, but this one has some kind of hidden line removal. As you see here, this is kind of columns. Behind the columns going to be blocked, blocked by your scene. So that is why there is no lines, right? So this is hidden line removal technique-based 3D wireframe view. Very common and very uh, usual representation in architectural design domain. Another view represented by black and white using line drawings. But sometimes this kind of line drawing is much effective and powerful to express your design compared to photorealistic rendering or some color fields. Okay? So we still need this kind of line drawings done by computers. Simply imagine you have to draw this one by your pencil all the night, possibly two or three more days required for doing this kind of thing. But by computers, using computational model, you can easily then generate this file. Okay? Later on, we're going to deal with how to do that okay? using computers, mostly using SketchUp this semester, as well as some of 3D Max software, because this is freshman course as one example of your computing tool. Another representation you need to know is 3D rendering. 3D rendering has very different type of uh, visualization. Photorealistic rendering, sketch looking rendering, and some color fill rendering without shade, or only shaded rendering, and so on. Take a look at this building. You may, some of you may know this building, located in Beijing, China, the headquarter of CCTV, designed by SOM, world famous design firm. This is kind of a pre construction 3D render shot to, to foresee how this building looked like. That's the question. And they generated this file using very specialized 3D software as well as some 2D graphical edit tool such as Photoshop. So this is 3D rendering, architectural rendering, very professional 3D rendering image. And this is another type of 3D rendering. But as you see, 
the Google logo here. This is Google Earth-based real-time rendering. You know gaming, LOL, or some other games? You are playing a lot of games, mostly 3D. They are all real-time render-based technology applied for your, your game engines. Very similar to that game engines, Google Earth supports real-time. You can navigate this map like playing game. Navigate this building front and back side and rotate upside down, zooming in and out. It's going to move in real-time because it's real-time 3D rendering. Let's take a look at an actual project. You may find out this is obviously it's not a picture. This is a kind of computationally generated render image because elements are all in white color. And take a look at this one. Chairs and table, dining table. This one looks like a kind of restaurant. And that's true. And there is a certain kind of red colored object. It's not that clear what, it, what is this. And this one looks like a kind of a picture, but actually this is photorealistic computer rendering for this area, okay? Dining tables are there because this is a kind of new restaurant. And this is picture after constructing this real uh, design. Some elements realized just like as designed, like this. This is computer image, and this is picture. Another picture here. The name of this restaurant is Hain Sonseng, designed by Jay is Working. The company Jay is Working, operated by Professor Jang Sun Gak in this department. Okay, the company is over there building HIT. So he designed this one a couple of years ago, and. Let's get, see, take a look at, again, computational representation. And let's get, talk about some certain kind of computational representation about this design. Take a look at this floor plan, amount of tables, because this is commercial restaurant, amount of chairs, but very different location, different rooms, dining hall area, so another big area for groups, and so on. Toilets, some storage area, some kitchen area, main entry. This is floor plan using architectural symbols. So you may be figuring out which one is door, which one has double flushing doors, which one is sliding door, which one is some kitchen elements, and so on, because it's floor plan. But there is no representation of that red colored object, right? This is 3D rendering. There is this curved object. Anyone who imagine what is this? What this stand for? No? No one knows? Guess. Okay. In this 3D view, anyway, we can see the objects crossing this dining area. But in this floor plan, if we represent that kind of complex object, it hinder, hinders to uh, recognizing what, it, what are there. It's not easy to represent and understand floor plan. So it's removed. But in 3D representation, in 3D representation, it should be modeled and visualized in this way. That's the reason why we need to use both different techniques. 2D drawings represents exact spatial allocation using this kind of pl floor plan. But 3D rendering for representing basic concept and some atmosphere and some colors and so on before construction. Let's get talk about that object. Take a look at this one. This is Chinese restaurant. And this is main gate. 
when people get entering this building, sorry, this restaurant, they may find out this Chinese bowl and chopstick, and there is a kind of noodle. It starts from this point. Take a look at this one, chopstick and bowl. And this one going to be playing around this dining area, and it going to end somewhere. Anyway, very straightforward and easy to understand concept. Because this is Chinese restaurant, designer's intent to represent this design is simply noodle. But if this co noodle color is yellow or some very noodle-like color, it's going to be not that good. But he changed the color, red color, and very freeform shape he designed. And in actual design, anyway, it had been realized in this way. So computational manner, computational tool for representing this one is kind of conventional. You have to draw this one. But if you use this kind of software, it is really hard to represent this kind of object, right? But if you know how to represent this kind of 3D photorealistic rendering, sometimes not photorealistic, but very effective 3D rendering, that will be very helpful for representing your, your design, to sell your design to owners, OK? That's why you need to know this kind of computing technologies, as well as this kind of conventional technique, OK? So, this is kind of quick overview of actual design-based representation and explanation about why design computing, okay? Let's get move into the lab exercise and some details, okay? 